Welcome to our Sunday School children. Before we start, let's pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful to Thee for bringing us again to worship Thee and to hear Thy Word and help us, our Father, as we think of the revision of the Ten Commandments, to take Thy Word in, that we might think seriously about the words that we hear. For Christ's sake. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn number 14, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God my Father. chapter 19 verse 16 to 22 Matthew chapter 19 verse 16 to 22 and the Bible reads from verse 16 and behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life and he said unto him why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness, honour thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. May the Lord bless that word to us children. Let's turn now to our next hymn, which is To God Be the Glory, hymn number 106.
Our lesson today is a revision of the Ten Commandments. Well, children, boys and girls, you know very well from our previous lessons on the Ten Commandments that the Ten Commandments were given to Moses by the Lord God when he called him up into a mountain and spoke to him and gave him instructions, ten instructions about how the people should behave towards God and towards one another. And those ten instructions, we know them as the Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments, they were not given so that we can have a list to tick off when we have done them. These Ten Commandments, they're supposed to cover every aspect of our lives and they're meant for us to use them upon our hearts. Not just for us to do them, but we need to obey from the heart first. And these Ten Commandments, they're given to us by God as a basis or means by which we might worship Him and then love our neighbour. And they're meant for us to have only God as our priority, to love God with all our strength, all our minds, all our hearts, and then to love our neighbours as ourselves. And so commandment number one to four was given for us to love God completely, and commandment number five to ten was also for us to love our neighbour. So, commandment 1 to 4, love God. Commandment 5 to 10, love your neighbour. And that's what we are meant to do with the commandments. But, boys and girls, it's impossible for us to love God and to love our neighbour if we do not know God, we need to come to God in order to love him as we should and to love our neighbour as we should. Anyhow, we want to use today for our lesson the rich young ruler in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 22, we read in our reading about the rich young ruler. He knew the Lord Jesus was good. And he knew that the Lord Jesus knew many things. What he didn't know is that the Lord knew everything. And that the Lord knew him. Even before this young man came to see the Lord, he had known about him. Anyhow, this young man one day comes to the Lord and he asks this question Good Master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Well this young man he didn't know that the question he was asking wasn't the right question. He should have asked the question what shall I do to be saved? But he was thinking, no, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? I suppose he thought that by doing good, God will be pleased and give him eternal life. And look, he wants to have eternal life, but not in accordance to God's way, his way. Look what the Lord Jesus says to him. If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So the Lord is telling him, 
Eternal life is for those who would keep the commandments. The Lord says, if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. And the rich young ruler says, which? As if he's saying, well, I've kept all of them, but just in case, which one? Which one have I not kept? And the Lord Jesus, he sums up the last six in his statement at the end. So he gives him, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, honour thy father and thy mother, thou shalt not bear false witness was the ninth commandment. Notice the Lord left out the last commandment. Thou shalt not covet. Now, we don't know why he did that, but we can see from what happens later on that the Lord Jesus knew that this man, he actually hadn't kept any of the commandments and had broken all of them. Nonetheless, the Lord gives him a summary of all these, of all the last six commandments. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Of course, this young man, he seems to be proud. He says, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What is there that I haven't done? What commandment have I not kept? From when I was a little child, I've kept them. And then the Lord Jesus says, Well, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And you shall have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. You see, the Lord doesn't say to him, If you do these things, you'll have eternal life. But only, he says, if you come and follow me. See, coming and following the Lord. That's where eternal life is. And so this young man, do you think he said, All right, Lord, I'll go and sell all that I have and give to the poor. And I'll have treasure in heaven and come and follow you. Oh, no. What did he do then? Well, when he heard what the Lord Jesus said, he became very sad and he turned his back on the Lord Jesus. But why was he sad? Well, he was sad because he had a lot of money. He had a lot of possessions, a lot of riches. And so he was sad that he couldn't give away his riches and follow the Lord at the same time. And so this young man, actually, he didn't follow all the commandments and you might say, but how do we know he didn't follow all the Ten Commandments? Well, we know that the Ten Commandments are made up of two main commandments, which the Lord Jesus he has given us in his word. And if we look in the Bible, we can see that the Lord has given us the Ten Commandments. He has summarized them in his word, in Matthew. We just turn to that chapter in Matthew and see where the Lord God has given us the Ten Commandments in a summary form. See, the Lord Jesus, he says, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. See, someone asked him, Master, which is the great commandment in the law. And the Lord Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
So you see, children, that rich young ruler, he didn't obey the commandments of God. You see, he broke all the commandments. He broke the great commandment. Did he love God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind? No. How do we know that? Well, he didn't want to follow the Lord Jesus. If he truly loved God, he would have followed the Lord Jesus Christ. But by not following the Lord Jesus, he shows that he doesn't love him as he should. And therefore he's broken commandment number one, two, three and four, which have to do with loving the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. But he also broke commandment number five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. How did he break this commandment? Well, the Lord asked him to give up his possessions, to sell them and give to the poor. But he wouldn't do that. And that poor person, the poor that this man could have given to, are his neighbours. So he breaks the second great commandment. Loving his neighbour as himself, which the Lord, even the Lord, told him about. And so this man, he wasn't willing to love his neighbour as himself. He was too selfish. And so he breaks commandment number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, and number ten. And because he's broken all the commandments, then he is actually not obeying the Lord. And so he has broken all the commandments, you see. And so these commandments, they hang together. If you break one, you break all of them. And this rich, rich young ruler, he had broken all the commandments. Well, children, boys and girls, we cannot fully obey God's commandments if we are not his children, if we do not obey his word, if we haven't trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we still have a stony heart, we cannot obey the commandments. We are disobedient children and God will judge us. But if we pray for a warm heart, then we'll be able to obey the commandments of God. And these commandments, they're not just negatives. They're meant for us to look at the positive aspect the positive side of them. We are to look at them as positives. Having God alone as our God. Thinking upon him and bowing down to him. Only as God. And making sure that we do not take his name in vain. We are always careful that we are using the name of the Lord seriously. And also... On the Sabbath day, we make sure we pray, we seek the Lord's face, we try and do all those things that keep our minds on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we remember the Sabbath day and we honour the Lord's day on that day. And if we think about the Sabbath day, we also want to make sure that we prepare for it the previous night. And on Saturday, we prepare ourselves for the Lord's day and we want to make sure that we're keeping it holy but also we think of honouring our father and our mother our parents and anyone else that has authority over us we might think of the government or maybe our teachers and so on and so we're honouring those that have authority over us but also we go about doing good, we don't kill, we promote 
people's reputation in their good way. Not people's reputation who are evil, wicked people, but those people who are doing well. We don't want to say bad things about them or do anything that will harm them, but we do everything to help our neighbours. And even adultery, we don't commit adultery against our neighbours, we're not unfaithful, we're not causing them to do evil, and so we help them even in many things, and we are those who are faithful. And even stealing, we don't steal from our neighbour, we provide them, we give them things, we don't keep things for ourselves, we provide them with all sorts of things that they need, if they have a need. We don't tell lies about our neighbours, and we are truthful, we tell the truth about those who are our neighbours. But also we do not want anything that belongs to our neighbour. We are careful that we are providing instead of taking from them, and we are encouraging our neighbours even by preaching to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, children, boys and girls, have you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ today? Are you one who has a cold heart or a warm heart? Have you come to the Lord acknowledging your sin, trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, I pray, children, boys and girls, I pray that you truly have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ and that you might love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength and that you will love your neighbours as yourself. Our final hymn is hymn number 132 Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Well, children, we hope that you will be able to join us again for our online Sunday school next week. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for the lesson we have had on the Ten Commandments and their revision, and thinking about the young man who thought that he could obey all the Ten Commandments on his own, and he was very sure that he had obeyed all the Ten Commandments. And we pray, O oh Lord, that Thou would help us now to not think that we can obey the Ten Commandments without Thee. Help us, firstly, to turn to Thee, and help us to realise that the Ten Commandments do not of themselves give us eternal life but that eternal life is found in the Lord Jesus. And, O oh Lord, when we have eternal life, when we are saved, when we repent of our sins and come to Christ, trusting in his shed blood, only then are we able to obey thy commandments and to live in them. So help us now to turn to Christ, that we might obey his commandments and walk in them all the days of our lives. For Christ's sake. Amen.